Let's talk about how to use Reveal.js to easily create slides for your projects. First, we want to go to this URL and then click on use this template to get started. I'll choose create a new repository. I'm going to give the repository a name. I usually name my project slides and then the name of the slide that I want to create. I'm going to hit create a repository. Now to get started working on my slides, I'll go ahead and hit the code button and then make sure I'm the code spaces tab and click on create code space on main. This will take a while to get going, but once it gets started, you should see a copy of Visual Studio Code, which will allow you to create new slides. After a while, you should see a button that lets you open up the slideshow preview. It's right here. Now this is the title slide. I'm going to pull this out of this tab into its own window, and then I'll minimize the space to fit the screen a little bit better. You can find all the slides in the source folder and then the slides subfolder. The title slide is in the file called index.md. You can use a combination of Markdown and HTML to create the slides. If you have additional slides in your project, they would show up on a sidebar on the left of the slideshow. You can hit the M key to take a look at them. Right now, there's only one slide, so you can click on it to get to that slideshow. So you can see a simple slide with some text. You can hit the right arrow to get to the second slide and then hit it again to keep seeing bullet points. Let's take a look at the file that builds this. It's called 0101.md. You can see here the markdown that creates the slide. There's a YAML section at the top of each slide that has the title, which is the name that shows up in the sidebar. Every slide is separated by markdown horizontal rules, which are three dashes. This line right here prevents this section from appearing as a regular slide. There are also special codes that you can insert to change the look of the slides. For example, this one identifies this slide as the title slide and changes the background color to a dark gray. You can use bootstrap names to change this. So something like BG primary, we'll call it our slide blue and BG danger, we'll call it red. Let's go ahead and leave it as BG dark. In this slideshow, you can also see a pop out link. And this is basically HTML with a special class called slide link. If you want to add some notes that are not on the slides, you can use the double greater than sign with a carriage return. Any notes in this section will not show up in the slides. The second slide has a couple of bullet points as well as a link in the markdown format. The third slide has some sample code. Notice that it uses syntax highlighting, so it's color coded. You can use three tick marks for a code block and it will try to figure out the language, but you can also specify that you're using JavaScript. There's even a language for letting you step through code explanations by highlighting the code. Notice that right now only line one is selected as I've specified right here. If I hit the right arrow, you should see another section of code highlight as well. There are tons of options and you can go to the demo slide if you wanna learn more or go to this link for the Reveal.js website. Any slides with 00 or 99 at the beginning will not show up in the sidebar. One last feature, to the right of the slide name on the sidebar, you can see a notes icon, click on it and you'll get to a microsite that is automatically generated for you. Notice that the text that is normally hidden shows up. You can go back to the slides by clicking on the slide icon. If you want to, you can publish this and have GitHub host it. There is a GitHub action that will take care of this. First, let's make a change and then commit all the changes. I'm going to change this work to info right here, and then I'll hit save. And now I've made a change, which I'll need to push through source control. I'm going to hit commit. I'll say yes here. I'll give a commit message. And I'll go ahead and close this and sync the changes with GitHub. Now that everything's up to date, I'm going to go back into my project and I'll go to the settings tab and then click on actions and then general. I want to make sure that I allow workflow permissions of read and write for our project. Then I'll hit save. Let's go to the actions tab. You can see that as you were changing things, the actions tried to run, but it didn't have write permissions before. So let's go to the hamburger menu to the right of the last workflow run and I'm going to save you workflow file. You can see the action here. I'm going to say rerun fail jobs and then click this rerun jobs button. Now this will take a while, but once it runs, you should see a green check mark next to this workflow. Let's go back to settings and then choose pages. It should say deploy from a branch right here. Next, you want to click on the branch name and choose root. And then from this sub menu, you want to choose the docs folder. Then you want to hit save. Once the page has been deployed, you should see a green checkbox right here. Let's go back to settings and then pages. And now you should see a URL to your slides right here. Let's click on it. This is now a publicly accessible version of your website. There's a ton of other options, most of which can be changed using the index.js file right here.
If you scroll down, there is an option to show a footer, which is in the footer.html file. You can see the footer right here. To edit the footer, go to the footer.html file. This is where you can add some contact info for yourself, and you can show or hide this venue using the T key. The site is built with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, so everything is totally customizable. I've created dozens of these slideshows for all my courses and pretty much any other presentations that I've given over the last few years, so hopefully you'll find this useful.